Yeah, I'm staying at Auberge de Puit and Suliac just for the night. And it's $25, but you have to ask for that. Um, when I went to the tourist office, this was the last one they wanted to show me. And it may in part be because they don't get any kind of uh, referral fee for this. And then when I got here, she wanted me into the more expensive rooms. And I said, Bon Marche, Bon Marche, please. And I showed her this $25 price. And finally, reluctantly, she almost acted like she wasn't going to rent to me at all. And she said, okay, we'll go up and look at number eight, see if you like it. So this is number eight. It's a old, old room. The bed's kind of a hammock, but it's neat and it's clean. Um, the bidet, which I don't know if I can use, but I'll try it. <sighs> and um, the sink are new and the tile is new. Um, and it has a closet, which I never use. And it has a table, which I might use. And it has a television, which there's no point in using because it's all in French. And if there is an English program, they talk French over the top of it, so you can't understand the English. This is the <laughs> the window, and it looks down into the Place des Petites, for Puit, rather. And this is apparently the restaurant or bar area for this little auberge. Now, the irony is, I will not use the closet. I will only open up my bag briefly to get a couple things out and put a few things away. And I'm leaving right now, I just got in here, I'm leaving right now and go look around town and make sure I know how to get to the railroad station. So you see, I don't care how much it costs or what it's like, um, as long as it's clean, that's fine for me. <clears throat> this is the hallway down to my room. And these are the nicely painted walls. It's a very, very nice hotel. And this is a little picture I wanted to get someone who's drawn of a bird's nest with a feather on it. I think it's cute. One of those rooms up on top, I think the one to the right, second one from the right is really mine. This is the little square in the center of town here. That's some kind of water pump that people still use for potable water, it's cool. This tower may be the back of that fellow's house, I don't know. The uh, map is uh, kind of screwy. It's hard to follow it. Okay, this is Place Lucine uh, Ville. So these are perhaps the three elements, three wings that compose his home. It was quite a castle. And it's perhaps the third, I don't know. This is why the map shows us able to walk through because he had a tunnel underneath his house, I guess. The tunnel was put through here, either through under his house at one time, or at some point in time, as you can see how other buildings went off from here, other structures have been put up against it. Very interesting. I'm sure you could do a whole thesis on one building and how, or one building site and how it's been changed over time. Okay, this is where I should have turned, it's right here. This is the route that was under his house. And now this is Place Lucine de Malville. And now I will go down here, Passage, and it is a go go. Good way to start the morning is just come relatively early, early to the French is 8 o'clock. And just get some tea and croissant or whatever you want to munch on and uh, that lady in the car there is the one who helped me last yesterday at the tourist office and just sit here and watch the city 
quote unquote start to come alive. And you see the way the average person here lives, at least in this little context. Kids going to school, businessmen doing whatever they do. I'm having tea this morning is a boulangerie, patisserie, probably something else too, but anyway, this is just some of the delights that they offer their customers, plus a whole rack right there. And they make these up here, apparently, yeah. are very very popular not in this area it's called noix n-o-i-x noix and a dried fruit platter To distribute uh, stuff, um, two guys each having either a pallet or a dolly will load it up for each of the little stores and run it down to those stores. They may handle several at one time, apparently. I think it's an example of a difference that is created by the environment. In other words, it's tight streets, little shops, small towns, the only way you can do beautiful piece of door. Wouldn't that be magnificent at home? Be magnificent just to reproduce it. This is the flex conduit that's used to run under the ground. It's a flexible uh, orange, but with a relatively smooth, flat uh, inner liner. It's somewhat opaque. You can see it a hell of a lot easier than running straight pipe. It's a pretty little park. That's a commemorative park to the uh, men who lost their lives, men and women I suppose, who lost their lives during the Second World War. They're redoing all of that area over there. Should look very nice when they're done. That's the restaurant I've eaten at a couple of times. I'm taking videos from that position to this position. That being my seat there in the corner reserved for me actually. It has a little brass plaque on it now. So it looks like they pour in a bunch of cement and then they sprinkle a bunch of rock, clean rock all over it, tamp it down and then uh, work it until the cement comes above the rock. Hmm. I'm guessing that the next phase of what they do uh, takes that uh, first eighth of an inch or so of cement off of the, uh, the surface and exposes the rock. And this fellow sprays it with whatever that pink stuff is after they're done. That's Jackie over there who helped me find the grocery store. Here's a nice little parklet, if you will. Postman delivers like in the United States, 
up the tricky little device there. This looks like a building that would have quite a bit of old history to it. Just considering that wall and if you look down the little alleyway there, there's some kind of arched window. Not that that has to indicate a church, but it might. Or some building like that. We're not too far from the Abbey. There's a nice little river coming through here that's fishing there. I don't know why nobody's fishing. They don't look like the carp variety, but they may be. There's a lot of water rushing out of there. That's a pretty addition to the town. And it looks like there's steps there, so you can go down and sit next to the water, which would be pleasant to read. Maybe I'll do that later. And it continues on to grace the rest of the town of Suliac. Just a nice building design. Some of the fighter jets that honk around this area apparently. I'm near an antique shop in Suliac and I just noticed stacked up beside it all of this wood stacked to dry and stay dry. Probably very expensive kind of hardwoods for cabinet makers and so forth. I don't know what kind of fish these are, but there's a lot of them around here. Nobody fishing, so they must not be edible. I'm guessing this is a nice little pretty spot. I if you own that home. Doesn't look like it's taken advantage of it much, but probably like others, they take it for granted and leave it the way it is. You can see it adds a nice amenity to these properties, or at least it could. Doesn't look like they're taking advantage of it. It looks like it's almost on its own little island, which is kind of nifty. Imagine what a person could do if they had the right to landscape all of this in. I see. This looks like a house that's been lived in and not much done to it over time. Okay, this is the Abbey. These are interesting flower boxes because they have a plastic liner, number one, that they probably drain. And then number two, they have those refrigerator type feet that can be used to level it off. Slowly working my way around the church. Not quite sure what the significance of this patio and then that little area in which it's just dirt in there is. That's one, two, and the bigger one, three.
I've just entered the Museum of Automation in Suliac. So let's see what there is.
I don't know if these will activate or not, but I'm not sure how the system works. Some of these they may not operate just to preserve them better. But you can certainly get a hint as to what some of them do. Pinocchio dolls and Howdy Doody dolls, uh, not dolls but puppets from all the rage. This is the computer system screen that runs all this stuff. These look like um, commercial applications of the technique. Advertising. Put to drugstore windows for Gillette. Or Phillips Razor. Or Airwick. Some more French applications. Dramamine, the travel. Go. Dr. Schultz. <laughs> is uh, reminiscent of what we do and I've seen in some countries where those things will start to roll over there like a triangle. So there's three different pictures and they just keep rolling. I've seen that in a lot of cities.
This is entitled Serenade Espana, and there's uh, Romeo and Juliet. This represents the transition into large versions of automated. I'm not sure if this will turn on or not, but it's interesting to see it. For kids, it would be like a wonderland, you'd think, when it was moving, akin to the mindset you get, kids would get from our modern movies, animations. Of course, God is ripe for this kind of stuff here. So apparently all this would be automated. Probably all of the figures, or many of the figures, move around in a circle. Imagine the effort required to create this one. All of those figures carved, wow. Plus the mechanics. And now if you look at this display of the tools and the forms and the dyes that were used to create these automated items. This is very much analogous and a precursor of the um, Pixar display that I saw at the, University, or at the Museum of Science in London. This is an earlier form of that same thing, that attempt to automate, animate non-living things so they looked and act like living things. In fact some of these would probably be quite similar to the Pixar people. And vice versa. A device for making copies of the same item. Of course today in animation you do it with the computer, but this is how you did it then, and you did it. The concepts remain the same, the goal remains the same, the technology changes, and as a consequence the product changes, but the intent remains the same. Palais Royal, the train station. Uh oh, come on, duck, get out of there, get out of there. Oh, yeah, that was close. We can't get the fat man through the gate. So the lady behind him is going to be waiting, missing her train. I think that's the preacher counseling, no swearing. I don't know what they're going to do with that little kid. Drop it on the train, maybe, I don't know. guessing she doesn't like to drive on trains or she's got more insurance than she should have. 
Oops. Advertising devices for zigzag cigarette papers, which no doubt saw a resurgence in the 1960s. Probably not from this little device, but maybe. Like the clown having a little nip. I think she's a lithograph printer. Or he is, I'm not sure. Washing the baby. Wonder if this has racial overtones. In France it wouldn't, in the United States it might. <laughs> This is kind of cool. Town fountain outside. I mean, outside in the little square in front of my um, hostel. Bees feeding off of it. Underneath there, you can see it. No, it is. Here's my locals. Interesting structure, don't know what it is. Just a little square down the road from my hotel. Hmm. Another surprise from wandering. No idea what this is, but notice that on both the left and the right side, there was some other thing attached that it was arched. Maybe even arched on both of the missing sides. Must be a church. Gotta be a church. You can see the remains of uh, architectural features that would have continued. You can see the inner structure of that uh, beam, vertical beam walls we've seen so much of in France. This apparently is under restoration. I think things take a long time here. 
This is the monument in Suliac for the men and women who died for France in the Second World War. I don't know what this says precisely, but generally what it says. Um, 38 adults, I suspect, or something like that, with eight infants, residents of uh, this area, were sent by the Nazis to, and the De Vichy government, to uh, extermination in Auschwitz. This is kind of like the main street through here the downtown section here. Not terribly exciting. Not all that touristy. This looks like the center of the town. It's a lady that has her own uh, <clears throat> pottery shop apparently and she's in the back there making one now or painting one up. Pretty, I hope it sells. Hope she makes money. Hope she does it in cash and doesn't report it. It's interesting that we create giant church churches as offerings or memorials or whatever to God. What does it say about the creation of these kind of places? Memorials to ourselves? Hopes that somehow we can evidence with the buildings we create here or the grave sites or the tombstones that uh, we are important and we have lived. Notice this edifice here. Many of these are for family and perhaps reflect the hope that that family will continue at nauseam into the future.